happy Friday. Welcome to this episode of Find a Book Friday. It is a beautiful day here. It's a lovely 80 degrees. I actually almost did this read aloud outside, but the puppies next door are being a little loud. So I came back inside, but it's definitely a beautiful day to take a book and curl up on a porch or something outside and enjoy a day to read if that is something you can do. So for today, I decided to pick a book that is an oldie, but definitely loved by everyone. And if it's one that you have not read or you do not use in your classroom, I definitely recommend it. And this is The Westing Game by Alan Raskin. And this book um, I use in my classroom often to talk about problem solving and helping kids keep track as they read. And it's a great mystery, so all of your students will love it. Depending upon their reading level, obviously, I use this Basically third through fifth grade with my third graders I had to do much more scaffolding and a lot more organization and it would be a group read aloud often uh, But my fifth graders could read this for literature circles or different book clubs They were doing and those kinds of pieces and then fourth grade falls in the middle depending upon where they are So I'm gonna read the first chapter of this to you today, and I hope you enjoy it Chapter one is called sunset towers the sun sets in the west. Just about everyone knows that. But Sunset Towers faced east. Strange. Sunset Towers faced east and had no towers. This glittery, glassy apartment house stood alone on the Lake Michigan shore five stories high. Five empty stories high. Then one day, it happened to be the 4th of July, a most uncommon looking delivery boy rode around town slipping letters under the doors of the chosen tenants to be. The letters were signed Barney Northrup. The delivery boy was 62 years old and there was no such person as Barney Northrup. And this is what the letter said. Dear lucky one, here it is, the apartment you've always dreamed of at a rent you can afford in the newest most luxurious building on Lake Michigan, Sunset Towers. Picture windows in every room, uniformed doorman, maid service, central air conditioning, high speed elevator, exclusive neighborhood, near excellent schools, etc., etc. You have to see it to believe it, but these unbelievably elegant apartments will be shown by appointment only, so hurry, there are only a few left. Call me now at 276-7474 for this once-in-a-lifetime offer. Your servant, Barney Northrup. P.S. I am also renting ideal space for doctor's office in the lobby, coffee shop with entrance from the parking lot, and a high-class restaurant on the entire top floor. Six letters were delivered, just six. Six appointments were made, and one by one, family by family, talk, 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 Barney Northrup led the tours around and about Sunset Towers. Take a look at all that glass, one-way glass, Barney Northrup said. You can see out, nobody can see in. Looking up, the Wexlers, the first appointment of the day, were blinded by the blast of morning sun that flashed off the face of the building. See those chandeliers? Crystal, Barney Northrup said, slicking his black mustache and straightening his hand-painted tie in the lobby's mirrored wall. How about this carpeting? Three inches thick. Gorgeous, Mrs. Wexler replied, clutching her husband's arm as her high heels wobbled in the deep plush pile. She too managed an approving glance in the mirror before the elevator door opened. You're really in luck. Barney Northrup said. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to 3D. Now is that breathtaking or is that breathtaking? Mrs. Wexler gasped. It was breathtaking, all right. Two walls of the living room were floor to ceiling glass. Following Barney Northrup's lead, she oohed and awed her joyous way through the entire apartment. Her trailing husband was less enthusiastic. What's this, a bedroom or a closet? Jake Wexler asked, peering into the last room. 
It's a bedroom, of course, his wife replied. Hmm, it looks like a closet. Oh, Jake, this apartment is perfect for us, just perfect. Grace Wex Wexler argued in a whining coo. The third bedroom was a trifle small, but it would do just fine for Turtle. And think what it means having your office in the lobby. Jake, no more driving to and from work. No more mowing the lawn or shoveling snow. Let me remind you, Barney Northrup said. The rent here is cheaper than what your old house keeps cost in upkeep. How would he know that? Jake wondered. Grace stood before the front window where, beyond the road, beyond the trees, Lake Michigan lay calm and glistening. A lake view. Just wait until those so-called friends of hers with their classy houses see this place. The furniture would have to be reupholstered. No, she'd buy new furniture. Beige velvet. And she'd have stationery made. Blue with a deckled edge. Her name and fancy address and swirling type across the top. Grace Winsler Wexler. Sunset Towers on the Lake Shore. Not every tenant-to-be was quite as overjoyed as Grace Winsler Wexler. Arriving in the late afternoon, Seidel Pulaski looked up and saw only the dim, warped reflections of treetops and drifting clouds in the glass face of Sunset Towers. You're really in luck, Barney Northrup said for the sixth and last time. There's only one apartment left, but you'll love it. It was meant for you. He flung open the door to a one-bedroom apartment in the rear. Now is that breathtaking or is that breathtaking? Not especially, Seidel Pulaski replied as she blinked into the rays of the summer sun setting behind the parking lot. She had waited all these years for a place of her own, and here it was, in an elegant building where rich people lived. But she wanted a lake view. The front apartments are taken, Barney Northrop said. Besides, the rent's too steep for a secretary's salary. Believe me, you get the same luxuries here at a third of the price. At least the view from the side window was pleasant. Are you sure nobody can see in? Seidel Pulaski asked. Absolutely, Barney Northrop said, following her suspicious stare to the mansion on the North Cliff. That's just the old Westinghouse up there. It hasn't been lived in for 15 years. Well, I'll have to think it over. I have 20 people begging for this apartment, Barney Northrop said, lying through his buck teeth. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Whoever, whatever he was, Barney Northrop was a good salesman. And one day he had rented all of Sunset Towers to the people whose names were already printed in the mailboxes in an alcove off the library. Office, Dr. Wexler. Lobby, Theodorakis Coffee Shop. 2C, F. Baumbach. 2D, Theodorakis. 3C, S. Pulaski. 3D, Wexler. 4C, Who. 4D, J.J. Ford. And the fifth floor, Shin Hu's Restaurant. Who are these people? These specially selected tenants. They were mothers and fathers and children. A dressmaker, a secretary, an inventor, a doctor, a judge, and oh yes, one was a bookie, one was a burglar, one was a bomber, and one was a mistake. Barney Northrup had rented one of the apartments to the wrong person. So that's chapter one of the Westing game. And it's really neat to go through this because you can figure out who's the doctor and who's the lawyer and who's the burglar and who's the mistake and, and all of those pieces as you read. Read the book. So if you've not read the Westing game, it's a relatively short read. I highly recommend that you read it. Have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday. Bye.